Slow motion is cool. Cameras like the Sony a7S III can shoot 120 frames per second in 4K and even 240 frames per second in HD. But you know what's cooler than 240 frames per second? A billion dollars. 1,000 frames per second. Enter the Kronos 2.1, 1,000 frames per second in full HD. That sounds pretty good. But do you really need to go out and buy another camera to get 1,000 frames per second? Or can you fake it with cameras like the Sony a7S III? Will you even be able to tell the difference? Let's find out. First, a little bit about this camera. This isn't your normal mirrorless camera. This is a high-speed camera, meaning it can shoot insane frame rates, from 1,000 frames per second in HD all the way to 24,000 frames per second in 640 by 96. High frame rates mean fast shutters, and fast shutters means lots of light, like all the lights. To get proper exposure, I have to use all the lights I own, crank to the max, and even then, sometimes it's not enough. It has a 4 thirds sensor and a CS mount. Now because of the sensor size and the mount, getting a lens without vignetting the black shadow on the edge of the frame can be tricky. First, you'll probably need an adapter. This is a C to E F adapter, and this is an old Canon 24 to 105 F4 lens. I tested a bunch of the lenses I own, and this one actually worked the best. With this lens, I can shoot almost all the way open without getting vignetting, and I only have to punch into about 35 millimeters or so to be able to get focus, which, by the way, is manual. Speaking of the adapter, this camera does not have an electronic aperture control, so this blue ring here actually controls my aperture. In terms of recording, when you press record, you're actually recording to an internal buffer, and depending on the model, you'll get 2.5, 5.5, or 11 seconds of record time before the buffer overwrites itself. So you have to be quick. Once you record a clip into the buffer you like, then you could save it to an SD card or an external hard drive. There are other interesting quirks, like doing a black calibration before you record to avoid green lines on your image, a battery that lasts under an hour, and a handle that basically makes it impossible not to press the menu buttons when you're holding it. All that being said, this is a great high-speed camera in a small package, but do you really need all those frames to get that insane slow motion, or can you slow down on other cameras like the Sony to get a similar result? I decided to test it out by shooting a quick spec ad for Coca-Cola. One using the Kronos 2.1 in 1000 frames per second and the other using the Sony a7S III. To match the resolution and frame rates of the Kronos to the Sony, I recorded the Sony a7S III in 240 frames per second in HD and then slowed it down 4.16666666667 times. Then I did another test using Optical Flow in Premiere and another using Pixel Motion in After Effects to see if that helped close the gap. For shutter speed, the Kronos uses shutter angles. So I'm using a 180 degree shutter angle and to match that on the Sony, I wanna roughly double my frame rate, so one over 500. Okay, first the Kronos. and now the Sony without any manipulation. The amount of frames missing is causing a lot of choppiness that doesn't look great. But tools like Optical Flow in Premiere and Pixel Motion in After Effects use frame blending to help smooth things out. Let's start with optical flow and see if it helps. To enable it, right click the clip you've slowed down and go up to time interpolation and choose optical flow. Finally, I wanna see if pixel motion in After Effects looks any better. To use pixel motion, right click on the clip Go up to Frame Blending and choose Pixel Motion. Can you tell a big difference? Let's look at it side by side. Clearly having all those frames makes a difference, but is the Sony good enough? That's for you to decide. Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time.